where did they go? This is one of the many unanswered questions that come into play when you think of the lost colony of Roanoke. After the first visit, do they send another expedition? After Roanoke ultimately fails, do they risk colonizing again? The lost colony of Roanoke is one of the biggest mysteries in American history, and the debate over what happened is still alive today. The Queen had some tough decisions to make. The first colony failed horribly, so questions arrived if the right decision was to go back. The government has some serious concerns with the way the last settlement attempt went. The Queen had to make the right business move, and she took the risk of sending the colonists back. After a long while, they realized they didn't have enough supplies. John White volunteered to go back to England to get supplies and promised he'd be back soon, but that is not how things panned out. John White was unaware of the war that had broke out in England. The enemies had the English surrounded, blocking the water passage that John White had planned to go back to Roanoke through. Three years later, he returns. On his way there, he decides to keep a journal. He returns to find what will go down in history as the biggest mystery the world has ever seen. John White returns to an empty colony. Croatoan is written on a tree along with the letter C-R-O. Needless to say, John White was confused. In the diary that he kept, he stated, in the very bow thereof were curiously carved these fair Roman letters C-R-O. There have been multiple plausible theories to what happened to the colonists, along with tremendous amounts of evidence to prove or disprove these theories. Some of the most plausible include, but are not limited to, a hurricane coming through and wiping them away, the settlers joining in with the Indian tribes nearby because of their lack of resources, or maybe they were attacked and taken prisoners ending up in jail, maybe they were captured by the Spanish and killed back in Spain or maybe they could have moved to a different island and died off at sea. The interesting part of all of this is that there are minimal artifacts and no dead bodies to prove any of these theories, so many people choose to believe whatever they think is the most plausible. John White created many paintings that showed how the English viewed the Indians and the way they lived. He had pictures of women, villages, as well as many other various Indian artifacts. Many historians debate over the theories, and here is some evidence provided that supports each theory. The hurricane theory is a very popular choice. In an article addressing the theory, it says, The original report that the colonists had been massacred might be correct. There was a history of strife between the colonists and the American Indians in Roanoke often over food. Recent research has also come up with a reason why those problems might have led to a massacre. By studying growth rings on trees, scientists found that from 1587 to 1589, the entire United States East Coast was hit by the most extreme drought in 800 years. The evidence to prove that this may not be the correct theory is the fact that nothing around was destroyed. The landscape looked all right and no bodies were found anywhere. Another theory with evidence that puts the theory up for debate is the thought that they joined an Indian tribe due to their lack of resources. In an article, it says, the colonists were captured and enslaved by the American Indians. That idea is now the most popular. It would explain why no evidence of a massacre was found. According to Lee Miller, author of Roanoke, Solving the Mystery of the Lost Colony, the American Indians captured the English colonists, then scattered them as far away as what is now Georgia. Some of the English were assimilated, others were enslaved. Another theory with a plethora of evidence to support it is the theory that they were attacked and were taken as prisoners of war. In this article, it states, a collection of newly discovered European objects, including a sword hilt, broken English bowls, and the fragment of a slate writing tablet still inscribed with a letter, could point to the presence of the colonists on Hatteras Island, some 50 miles southeast of their settlement on Roanoke Island, as well as at a site on the mainland 50 miles to the northwest. The final theory we will talk about is the theory that the colonists moved on a different island and died at sea. Some evidence to support this theory is 
Now, two independent teams say they have archaeological remains that suggest at least some of the abandoned colonists may have survived, possibly splitting into two camps that made their homes with the Native Americans. The fact that the country had enough courage and money to send for another expedition is remarkable. The diplomacy of the Queen to have relations to fund the next trip, even after the debate of whether or not to send them back. In John White's journal, it says, This was accordingly performed, and our two boats put off onto the shore. In the Admiral's boat, we sounded all the way and found from our ships until we came within a mile of the shore, nine, eight, and seven fathoms. But before we were halfway between our ships and the shore, we saw another great smoke to the southwest of Kinriker's Mountains, as well as... But that which grieved us more was that when we came to the smoke, we found no man nor sign that any had been there lately, nor yet any fresh water in all this way to drink. Being thus wearied with this journey, we returned to the harbor where we left our boats, who in our absence had brought their cask ashore for fresh water. So we deferred our going to Roanoke until the next morning, and caused some of those sailors to dig into those sandy hills for fresh water whereof we found very, very sufficient. The English clearly wanted the relations and colonies in America to go well, so the debate was ended quickly by the Queen. Virginia Dare played a part that often goes unnoticed in the grand scheme of the mystery that is the lost colony. In an article, it says, Once the colonists landed, they began repairing the houses already there, and started building new homes. Eleanor Dare gave birth to a baby girl on August 18th and named her Virginia. Virginia Dare became the first English child born in the New World. No one realizes how much Virginia did for the diplomacy of the English, specifically John White, because she was his granddaughter. John White ended the debate months later and they stopped the search. Sir Walter Raleigh is also an unrecognized hero. He helped end the debate, go to England, and although he was executed, he still held a big, big role in Roanoke. The ships they sailed to Roanoke in had a very specific style and were semi-important towards Roanoke. In this article, it states, the clinker built ship, while extremely strong and durable, was difficult and expensive to repair, the services of a master shipwright being required. Moreover, gun ports, which were cut through the overlapping, weakened the hull significantly. In spite of these drawbacks, the average life of a typical ship was an impressive 65 years. Even though this method of construction was being phased out by the mid-1540s, it is likely that some of the vessels that took part in Roanoke Ventures were clinker built. Although this might not have much to do with the debate of Roanoke, it does have a lot to do with the diplomacy. This shows how the English wanted to be seen and how the English treated their citizens. Another ship was important to the diplomacy of the Roanoke colony as well. In an article, it says, the carvel built of skeleton frame ship was also strong, durable, and difficult to repair. The skill of a master shipwright was not always required. However, a competent carpenter could handle many repairs and alterations. These ships held a gigantic part in the overall success of colonizing in not only Roanoke, but other areas as well. It also contributed to how the other countries viewed them, which helped their diplomatic appearance as a whole. Overall, the government of Roanoke did all it could to keep a good, strong, and trustful diplomatic appearance during the seemingly endless debate of the Roanoke colony. This debate continues to this very day, still with very small amounts of evidence to prove any one of the theories, but researchers will not rest until they have discovered a definitive answer as to where the settlers went.